But today I'm going to show you how I make a dragon eye pendant with the eye cabochons that I uh, painted the gel polish uh, tutorial that I did last time. So I like to use lots of different types of textures. Uh, the sky is the limit. Uh, this one here, I've used the crackle technique um, that Debbie Carruthers um, sells online and I highly recommend her tutorial. Uh, this one I'm going to keep it a little more simple and just use a, a simple texture with a bit of parchment paper and that's the one I'm going to show you today. So to start off, I'm going to use Primo uh, clay in antique gold and then a mix of 18 karat and bright green pearl to make a, a different color and then I just have a little bit of a, a white um, just white scrap, it's not quite pure white, that I've already textured. So I'm going to go ahead right away and uh, I, I'm also going to do a little section with the white and use some alcohol inks on it. All this kind of stuff is really up to you whether or not you want to color it or if you want to save the coloring for the painting part afterwards and I'll do a tutorial on on how I finish these things with paint. Uh, for now, I will just use a little bit of alcohol ink, and I've chosen three colors today. It's uh, lettuce and butterscotch and stream, because I'm looking for kind of a greenish color. So I'll take, uh, maybe before I get into that, um, talk about some of the other things I'm going to use. A circle template, depending on the size that you need. Uh, a little bit of mica powder. Uh, silver is really nice. This one is a pearl color. Um, afterwards, I'm going to antique them anyways with paint, and then I'll be using Inca Golds to sort of bump up the color. Uh, tools that I'm going to be using, a couple of my favorite sculpting tools. This is a Christy Fusion tool. Uh, this is um, uh, came in a set of modeling tools some time ago, and I love this tool. I go to it all the time. You'll need an X-Acto knife, a couple of dotting tools is very handy, um, the Sculpey uh, Pearl and Etch, etch tools, very handy, and a blade, and then something to make some small circles with. Um, I also, this is bootlace ferrules that I bought online, and I've changed the shape of them to uh, to make it a little bit more of a, a slightly oval side with square sides or something and that makes really nice scales so I can show you how to how I do that as well so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a layer of the antique gold here uh, textured the back side already and um, so I'm going to put that down on my tile and we're going to texture this la level uh, layer So I just got a piece of parchment paper here, and I've just crumpled it up. So you need a good stiff piece of paper. You can use uh, foil if you like. That would work as well. So anyways, I'm just going to put it on there. Then I'm going to take my acrylic rod and roll over it. Rub it back and forth. And it starts to get a bit of a texture. I'll turn it around the other way. So it's kind of a leathery skin texture. If it's not textured enough, then I just crumple it up a bit and hit it by hand. Texture it a bit more. Try to get those hard edges to make an impression on the clay. So that's the that'll be the bottom layer. Then for the uh, so let's remove that now. So now I've taken my uh, antique, not antique, but the uh, 18 karat gold and the green pearl, and I've also made a thin, uh, a thin veneer, which I'll do the same texture on.
I'll remove that layer and save it for the next step. And then I've done the same thing. I've already put the texture on this sheet of white. So this one I'm going to color with the alcohol ink. So I have uh, the uh, Tim Holtz stamping tool. This one's been well used. And I'll put a couple of drops of each color on that. So this is the lettuce. And the butterscotch. And the stream. So I'm just going to dab that color on, turning my my uh, stamping pad as I go until I have a pretty good saturation of color. And then if that's too dark, you can take your crumpled up paper, put it over top of it, texture again and that'll pull a little bit of it off. And then you have to take the time to let that dry. So we'll move that aside. I have one already dry, so let's just clean this up a little bit. alcohol on a baby wipe and clean right up. Okay, so that's your texture sheets all prepared. So we'll start with the bottom layer and put it down here and then I'm gonna just to help myself orient myself I'm gonna cut a little circle of it off. This is maybe the size I'm going to use or it may be bigger than the size I'm going to use and I can cut it down with the next size cutter later. So I'll move that aside and then I'm going to take, I'll take a circle of the textured light green Okay, so I found a smaller circuit cutter that cutter that's a little bit bigger than the eye. So I'm just going to cut a circle out of this textured bit, and I'm going to center it. And that's going to really help me get this eye right in the center of the pendant. So then I put the eye on right about where I want it, and I'm going to press it in pretty good. Okay, so now we'll start making some color on this little fellow. So all I really do is start cutting strips. So I'm going to cut a strip, and my strips are kind of curved. So that'll be one. And then I want to curve for the top. That'll be two. Okay, so then I'm going to start putting these on. And I kind of like to have a bit of an edge here. And so this is what's going to hold the eye in place. So this will be this his bottom lid. And I don't press anything down too firmly in case I want to change it. His top lid it depends on how you, how you cut it, whether or not um, you're going to get a slightly angry looking dragon or a friendly looking dragon. Uh, if your curve is follows the eye shape 
sort of in this manner. He tends to look a little friendlier. If it comes up on an angle and then down again, it can look a little bit meaner. So whatever, um, whatever attitude that you want to get from him. But you just, this is very flexible, so you just curve it around the way you want it. So this is a bit of excess here. I'm just going to trim that off. Put that back. Have the bottom one come up and meet it. Okay, then we'll cut a few more curves. Maybe this time we'll go in use our alcohol ink. Just let that follow the shape of the eye. I'll cut one for the bottom as well. Using this side of the curve already. I need a little bit more color. This is all going to be painted again afterwards anyways. I'll just come in and give it another little strip. Okay, so now in the interest of making this pendant slightly smaller, I'm going to recenter my smaller cutter now and give this a trim before it gets too big. Okay, so now he's got a little color, a little texture on him. So now we're going to add a few more details. So I'm going to take a little bit of the excess white that I saved before I colored it. Just make myself a little bit of a snake. Taper both ends. And that's going to fill in this little gap in the eye. And you could do anything you wanted with that. You could curl it around, you could chop it off, whatever you want. We'll just do that. We'll do another one on the bottom in the same manner. Take some of that off, it's a little too long. Okay, so this layer I like to texture. And what I've done is I've taken the, the boot lace ferrule and uh, just took a pair of pliers and straightened out the edges. Uh, I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so all you have to do is you take your pair of pliers and you put one side in there and you just sort of give it a bit of a bend. 
basically you're crimping it. Then you go to the other side and you crimp it. And if your pliers are thin enough, you can do the bottom as well. But even just that shape, which is sort of triangular, but a softer triangle, is basically what you're looking for. So I'm going to use that shape. Uh, I'll keep the widest part on the top, and I'll use that shape to texture all along here. When I antique this later on with paint, it'll really show up this texture. And you could spend hours playing with texture on these guys. Okay, and then I'll add a little bit of texture in places here. Okay, that's good. I kind of sometimes like putting a little texture just on the eye too, so I'm going to make a few little marks on the bottom of the eye. Again, that'll all be highlighted with paint later on. It'll look great. So now the next thing I like to do on these guys are make little spikes and they're they're lots of fun to do. So again I'm going to take some of that white that I reserved. A uh, good choice of colors would be black. I just happen to have the white handy. So I'm going to just make a bit of a fat snake and cut it into pieces that I can roll. So you want it short and stubby, kind of pointed on one end, but kind of stubby. Actually, you can have it any way you want. It's a dragon, so this is kind of the way I like to do them. They're comfortable to wear that way. I don't have to worry about them breaking off. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my textured alcohol ink sheet and I'm going to use a small cutter okay I've got these other bootlace feral uh, cutters these are ones from Mandarin Duck um, nice set I had a hard time finding the big sizes online but that's what they are so anyways I'm going to cut some uh, well, maybe I'll use a bigger cutter here. Just going to cut a few circles. You won't have room for much more than four of these, so we'll try to we'll start with that. So then after I get that one cut like that, I'll take a next size down cutter. If you got the Kemper cutters, they work really good. And I'm going to remove most of that from the uh, from this half circle. So then I take it and I take my little spike and I'll, I'll put the ends of this, I don't know if hopefully you can see this okay, I'll put the ends of it in behind the spike like that. Then I find where I want to put the spike on the on the dragon. Let's put this one here and I'll put it there and just kind of press it down. Get this guy out of the way. I find when I do them like that then it looks like um, it's, it's a little growth with the little spike coming out of it and it's, it's very three-dimensional looking. So I'll do another one. A 
wrap the points back to the back side. Get a little bit of a curve and find another spot for them. That looks good. This clay is really sticky. If your clay is not sticky, you might want to put a little um, bacon bond before you put these down just to make sure you have a good good adherence. For, for mine, it won't be a problem at all. So now I'm going to take that little bit of mica powder and apply it with a brush. Okay, so and I could be using um, Inca Gold on here, um, Gilder's Paste, even paint. Um, it's all it's going to get touched again when I go to paint it. And I'm going to just put a little of that. I got a little excess on the eye itself, so I got a cotton swab with a little bit of alcohol ink, or not alcohol ink, but alcohol itself, just to help remove some of that. So that's good. Okay, so lastly, I kind of like having these little warty wart things um, just to help fill in. Some of the space and, and give me a, a, another layer of texture. So for that I'm going to use the Etch and Pearl for that and just wet, wet the end of it with a little bit of water. So then you can just press it down, give it a bit of a spin. You could use a straw to cut these out with. Uh, whatever you like. Kind of like the Etch and Pearl because it kind of rounds it off. So that's way more than I'm going to need. Now let's see. Of course it's not going to come off. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's try that again. Stick it down a little bit better maybe this time. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay, that's enough for a start. So I'm going to use a dotting tool with a fair size ball at the end of it and decide where I want to put these little guys. So flip it over, pick it up. He needs a little wart right here. 
It's just a little extra detail that takes the paint real nice when you antique it. a few more. Okay, that's more than enough. I'll take the other side, make that hole a little bit deeper. Make sure they're well bonded. Okay, basically that's ready for the oven. Just make sure that eye shape is the way I want it. I can texture this lower eye part here. Okay. So that's going to be baked. I bake everything uh, according to the temperature that's recommended. Uh, it's primo clay, so it's 275 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I like to bake things for at least an hour, regardless of their thickness. So uh, I actually set my oven for about an hour and six minutes to accommodate for the uh, preheating time. I have a convection oven and it's, it's very reliable. So uh, I don't preheat, but I make sure that I shield it with a, a sheet of, um, of heavy foil. And um, the next video will be antiquing and finishing. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Bye.